Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. In today's session, we are shifting our focus to hip extension, continuing our exploration of the hip joint's complex mechanics. We'll dissect the structure, check out the muscles that drive hip extension, and then look at factors influencing the range of motion of this movement. Let's get started with a short recap from part one. As you might remember, the hip joint is a sophisticated ball and socket joint. The femur's rounded head fits right into the acetabulum of the pelvis, allowing for an extensive motion across multiple planes. Let's quickly review those key movements. Here you can see flexion, which we already know from last session. And here is extension, which moves the thigh backwards and is going to be our focus for today. Abduction shifts the thigh away from the body's midline, while adduction pulls the thigh backwards towards the midline. Internal rotation turns the thigh inwards, pointing the toes towards each other. External rotation turns the thigh outward, moving the toes away from each other. Lastly, circumduction is a circular movement which combines all of these actions. Today our focus is hip extension. So let's break down the muscles that are involved into primary movers, secondary movers and stabilizers to understand this movement a little bit better. So here are the primary movers. The powerhouse behind hip extension is the gluteus maximus, which is known for its size and strength. Originating from the ilium, sacrum and coccyx, it inserts into the iliotibial tract and the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. The gluteus maximus is not only one of the largest, but also one of the strongest muscles in the human body. Its powerful contractions are essential for explosive movements like sprinting and jumping, as well as for stabilizing the pelvis during walking and running. Interestingly, this muscle also plays a critical role in posture. Without it, a simple task like standing up from a seated position would be almost impossible. But now let's move on to the secondary movers, which are also very interesting. The hamstrings consist of the biceps, femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus, and they play a significant role in hip extension as well. It's important to note that the hamstrings are biarticular muscles, which means they cross two joints, the hip and the knee. This allows them to aid in both hip extension and knee flexion. We'll talk about this more when we talk about range of motion. I also want to add that their dual function is crucial for activities that require powerful leg movements, such as running, jumping or kicking, as you see here. But let's move on and talk about the stabilizers and use a single leg deadlift as an example. As you hinge forward at the hips to lower your torso toward the ground while balancing on one leg, several muscle groups work together to stabilize the pelvis and prevent it from tilting and rotating excessively. One of the key stabilizers in this movement is the gluteus minimus, along with its bigger brother, the gluteus medius. These muscles, located on the side of your hip, work to keep the pelvis level and prevent it from dipping to one side as you lower your torso. Their activation helps maintain proper alignment and control, ensuring that the movement remains smooth and controlled. In addition to the gluteus medius and minimus, other muscles act as stabilizers during the single leg deadlift. The deep external rotators, including the piriformis, obturator internus and quadratus femoris, contribute to stabilizing the hip joint and preventing excessive rotation. These muscles work to keep the femur just centered within the hip socket and ensure proper alignment and control throughout the movement. Now that we've gathered a pretty good overview about all the muscles involved in hip extension, let's move on and look at some factors influencing the range of motion. In principle, active extension is less than passive extension. With a straight knee, the extension is greater than with a bent knee. This is because the hamstrings lose some of their effectiveness as hip extensors when they are also engaged in knee flexion. Of course, we can help ourselves out by pulling our leg back with our hand and increase the extension. But beware, a lot of people tend to hyperlordose their spine and tilt their pelvis. While this deepens the pose, it doesn't mean that you are actually working on your hip extension. Anyway, this is not a stretching tutorial and of course these are not the only factors that influence the range of motion. I decided to make a detailed video about range of motion at the end of this series. For today, I hope you've learned enough. Feel free to also watch my first part about flexion 
and my follow-up video where I corrected some mistakes of video number one. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next episode when we talk about hip abduction. Have a good one.